Stay. The spirit in me welcomes, honors, embraces, and truly rejoices in the spirit in you. I am Reverend Jennifer Sachs. It is my honor to be the senior minister of the beloved community of Unity Atlanta, and we are delighted to have some folks in the sanctuary with us and to have all of you in our virtual community to celebrate and to share with us this beautiful day of World Day of Prayer. And we are so delighted that Gabriel Nelson Sears, a master of healing sound, is here with us again for this service. And we are so delighted that you have chosen to tune in and be with us as we move into this season, as we move from fear to faith. And so I invite you as we move into this time of preparation for this service to affirm with me, standing in truth, I move from fear to faith. And let us take that into prayer together, wherever we are, however it is comfortable to be. That we know that we stand in truth, that we stand in that power and that presence of God, that in, around, and through every aspect of our being, every fiber, every vein, every cell, every artery is filled with that divine life of God, that divine light of spirit. And we allow that to move us from fear to faith as we begin this joyous time, this sacred time together. We can imagine that anything that seems fearful to us is now being released, let go, and dissolving into the eternal ethers, never to trouble us again. We feel that presence of God moving in, around, and through all steps that are ours to take in our lives as we move away from anything that we fear, as we center ourselves in that power of faith, that presence of faith always with us, always within us. And we are grateful in these moments to activate that divine faith within us, all we ever need to renew it, to restore it, to bring it forth and allow it to lead the way into a greater experience of life. For so much, we are grateful, truly grateful, and we say thank you, God. And so it is, and so we allow it to be. Amen. And we are so delighted to have you with us. This is a service of sound. This is a service of meditation. This is a service where we hear inspirational words. And I am delighted that so many in our beloved community are able to join 
with us as we celebrate this World Day of Prayer with so many around the world. It started last night at Unity Village in Lee Summit, Missouri, and we here in Atlanta and people all around the world are sharing in this time of prayer, and we know how powerful those prayers are, that they lift us up, and we know that whatever we pray together, we carry with us and bring those prayers where we move standing in truth from fear to faith. And so we begin this sacred time together wherever you are. We invite you to be comfortable, to be at ease, to be at peace as Gabriel Nelson and our divine congregational care team leads us in a beautiful time to feel that renewal of faith. We are ready to move from fear to faith, and so we do, and so it is. Classic Daily Word from February 1961. For today, Thursday, September 10th, World Day of Prayer. The daily word for today is faith. The affirmation is, through prayer, I replace fear with faith. The scripture is from Mark chapter 5, verse 36. It reads, Fear not, only believe. The reading says, The power of our faith makes all things possible. But when we fear, we block the pathways through which the power flows. Thus, we prevent the perfect outworking of good in our lives. Even though we know the effect of fear, we do not always take the steps to conquer it. But there is a way 
to replace fear with faith. We do it through daily prayer, which enables us to feel a conscious oneness with God. Prayer by prayer, we develop the ability to keep our mind focused on God, and fearful thoughts arise less often. When such thoughts do come, we are alert to recognize them, and we can immediately erase them with an affirmation, for we have faith in God and in our ability to do the things we need to do. We gain strength as we pray. Then we practice maintaining the feeling of God's presence with us. Wherever we are, whatever we are doing, through prayer, we learn to live in faith and we rejoice and give thanks for all the good appearing in our life through the divine power of faith. Again, the daily word for today is faith. The affirmation is, through prayer, I replace fear with faith. Namaste. Podemos inmediatamente borrarlos. Borrarlos con una afirmación, porque tenemos fe en Dios y en nuestra habilidad para hacer las cosas que son necesarias hacer. Ganamos fortaleza a medida que oramos. Entonces, practicamos mantener el sentimiento de la presencia de Dios con nosotros en donde quiera que estemos en todo lo que estemos haciendo a través de la oración aprendemos a vivir en la fe y nos regocijamos y damos gracias por todo el bien que aparece en nuestra vida a través del poder divino de la fe Nueva vez, la palabra diaria para hoy es fe. 
Y la afirmación es, por medio de la oración, reemplazo el miedo con la fe. Namaste. From Fear to Faith, words of inspiration from Myrtle Fillmore, Unity co-founder, metaphysician, writer, and teacher. From a collection of her writings called How to Let God Help You. From the chapter, The Overcoming of Fear. Sometimes we fear that we have not the ability to do a thing we ought to do. We fear that there are obstacles in the way. If there are obstacles, we have made them. God never put anything in the way of progress. When we get rid of our fears, we find that the way is clear for us to go the Lord's way. Probably each of us has to face some particular danger, one that is greater than all the rest of the ills that hinder us. If we know and are faithful to truth, we need never fear. Whatever troubles may seem to arise, we can meet them with truth. Nothing can stand before it. If we would overcome all our enemies and find our freedom, we must be true to our one defense. There is only one power and one presence, the good. All scheming and falsity must fall before the consciousness that there is only one power, God. The power of darkness will vanish before it. Let us make these thoughts a part of our consciousness. I cannot be afraid, for God is omnipresent good. God is omnipresent protection. I do not fear, for God is with me. Namaste.
Good evening. The theme for tonight is moving from fear to faith. One of the key methods for moving from fear to faith is to change our expectation. Expectation is rooted in faith. It shapes our lives. It may seem simple, but it is quite powerful. See, expectation is actually the evidence of our faith. Jesus says in Matthew 17, 20, with faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. Nothing will be impossible to you. And so I've often sat back and wondered, well, how do I measure my faith? What is faith the size of a mustard seed? You can measure your faith through expectations. See, oftentimes we will have faith and we will believe in something that's, that we do not expect to happen. And we may not even do it consciously, we may do it subconsciously. I'll give you an example. Have you ever um, had someone or been, been in contact with someone or had to deal with someone that maybe had a difficult personality and you knew you had to interact with that person? I have been there. I'm sure we all have. There's been times where I would sit and I would pray and I would have faith that my interaction with that person would go well. But then in the back of my mind, I would think, well, I pray that it went well, but I don't expect much because I know how they are. See, we can't expect things that are opposite of what we are believing for. Why is that? That's because oftentimes we manifest what we expect. So it's very important that we are conscious of what we are expecting as we go throughout our daily lives. So in order to move from fear to faith, we have to concentrate on our expectations and we have to line our expectations up with the faith that we have. We have to line our expectations up with what we are believing for. So how do you get your expectations in line? How do you get your expectations to match our level of faith? The first is through prayer and meditation. I would relate prayer and meditation with expectations um, in an example of picking someone up from the airport. So if you have to pick up an incoming party from the airport, you're given a date, time, location, or terminal. So you would prepare yourself by getting dressed and leaving the house in a timely manner to meet the party that you are expecting. What happens when you get there and the party is late? Well, if a few minutes go by, you don't think anything about it because incoming flights are late all the time, right? But as more and more time elapses and you've not heard from the incoming party, you may start to get a little nervous. You start to think, did something change? Are they still coming? Did I miss something? And you start to lose a little bit of your peace. That's where prayer and meditation comes in. Because you are nervous because you haven't heard from your incoming party. But with prayer and meditation, you are in communication with God, your incoming party. So there's no need to worry there's no need to worry if, if they're not coming or if what you're expect, expecting will not come into fruition. There's no need to worry if it's delayed. There's no need to worry because being in communication with God through prayer and meditation will guide you. It will give you peace. You will know that even though it might be a little delayed, it's on its way. The terminal may have changed, but it's on its way. What I am expecting will come into fruition. That's what prayer and meditation does. It keeps you in communication with God, who is our incoming party, which gives us peace as a result that helps us to maintain these positive expectations. So in addition to prayer and meditation, there's one more thing you must do. You must have positive affirmations. 
and you must repeat these affirmations to yourself regularly. See, affirmations impress upon your subconscious mind the change or the outcome that you want to see. Prayer and meditation coupled with affirmations drive out fear. Fear robs us of our joy. Fear robs us of our power. It takes away our joy because you can't have worry and joy at the same time. It takes away our power because fear makes you believe that you have no ability to change the outcome. Fear, as in the example of the incoming party, will have you never leave your home or turn right back around because you believe that the good that you were expecting is not coming in when in all actuality it was right on the way. Some of us are too afraid to expect great things out of fear that we will be disappointed. But as I mentioned before, we oftentimes manifest what we expect. So it's extremely important that we are aware of what we are expecting. And it's extremely important that we begin to expect great things for ourselves. Prayer and meditation, along with affirmations, help to change or develop our expectations to meet our faith. As our expectations rise to our level of faith, we move from faith to fear. From fear to faith. We move from fear to faith. As we move from fear to faith, and as we grow in our faith, we begin to see power in our lives like never before. Namaste. To chant a little bit in thinking about the theme for World Day of Prayer and fear and faith, one of the things that came through was a, a Hindu chant um, for Ganesh. And Ganesh is the deity associated with removing obstacles before new journeys. Now this is not, we're not chanting or praying to necessarily to an actual elephant god. For me, in the metaphysical sense, Ganesh represents archetypes within myself as part of source. So that when we chant, we can release fear, which is the obstacle, and to start a new journey of faith. And it can be done several times a day. So this chant, which we'll repeat about uh, five times, it's two stanzas. We'll say each one three times. Om Ganesh Om, three times. Followed by Om Ganapata Om. So it's Om Ganesh Om, Om Ganapata Om. Ganapata is another personification, or not personification, it's another exalted thanks and recognition for Ganesh, which is part of our archetype within. And the purpose of these chants in general are to go from our sense of oneness, or rather our sense of individuality, to a sense of universality so that we go from the me to the we as we merge with the collective consciousness that we know is the I am spirit. So I'll begin, and when you're comfortable, you may join in. Again, releasing the obstacle of fear, replacing it with the new adventure and joy of faith.
Now I invite you to close your eyes and take in these vibrations and sounds.
I will be reading words of inspiration from Howard Thurman, a 20th century American theologian and mystic, from a collection of his writings called Meditations of the Heart, from the chapter Many Assurances of Faith. The assurances of faith are many. My faith in myself keeps me from overestimating or underestimating my own powers. It guards me against the pitfall of depression over personal failures or arrogance over personal triumphs. It centers my spirit upon that in me which is authentic and genuine and keeps me from betraying my own soul. My faith in my fellows keeps me from confusing compassion with pity, sympathy with sentiment, love with emotional reaction. It slows down the swiftness of my judgment of my fellows and urges me to wait out all disaffection. It keeps the way open for free and often easy access to my fellows and of my fellows access to me. My faith in life teaches me that life is its own restraint. It leads me directly to the source of life, which is at once the goal of life, God. It feeds the, the springs of my courage and breaks the wall of isolation that sometimes shuts me in. I am no longer afraid. Namaste. We are no longer afraid. The fear has passed. Within us, wherever we are, there is that presence that we feel of God, that we have checked our expectation at the gate and we have let it take us into a place where we can see our faith realized. We see that we can overcome our fears by moving our feet just a teeny tiny bit in that direction of the thing that we know is the best for us. We release whatever has come before these moments. If we have not done that already, I invite us, loose it and let it go. Because we know that all is the presence of that one power that we know as God the good. And we direct our attention not to the clock, not to the calendar, not to the should, not to the it's supposed to, not to the I assumed or I expected, expected it this way, but that I expect, we expect, as God's beloveds, that all good, that presence of life that is its own reward, is the thing that leads us forward. And so wherever we are, whoever we are, no matter what has happened before our time 
together, no matter where we live, how we look, who we love. We direct our faith to that thing that we know is ours. We know it is ours, whatever it is, the healing, the greater resource in our finances, the shift in a relationship, the movement to whatever that new thing is. We create that space and we expect it to come forth as the goodness of God. We remember that the obstacle is the thing that we see when we move ourselves from the faith to the thing that we think is behind us, catching us, that fear. But we know that within us we have that power to direct our attention fully on our faith. And when we're moving from fear to faith, we remember that all that faith we ever need is within us and it is our divine gift to renew and activate daily through our prayer, through our meditation, through our connections with loved ones and trusted partners on the journey. We direct our attention and know that whatever is flying in to our lives from whatever gate it is coming, whatever way, it is to be ours. And we know that God's time is always the perfect time. And so we trust that we can let loose whatever has been, that whatever we might believe about the uncertainty that is around us, what is certain, what is definite, what is always true for us is that presence of God as we allow God to move and do its awesome work within us, as us, through us. That is a truth that we can stand in as we move from fear to faith. And so it is, and so we let it be. And we are so, so grateful Whoever you are, wherever you are, however you look, whoever you love, whatever's been going on with you this week, we are so delighted that you have joined us here at Unity Atlanta, a beloved spiritual community. And if anything in this service has blessed your life, we thank you in advance for a gift, a tithe, a love offering, to say how much you appreciate being part of this beautiful community. And we are grateful. There are so many ways that we can bring in the bounty of goodness. And so we thank you. There are ways to give on our website. You can text to give. We have Cash App. We have Venmo. If you like the old-fashioned praying while you're writing out the check, we are grateful for that. And whatever way you are blessing the ministry, know that your gift blesses us and blesses so many who come forth to know that they can stand in the truth that they are the divine expression of God. And so let's take a moment and let us bless our offerings, whatever 
they might be. We sometimes we say, let's rub it up. You know, we want to get that energy of life and spirit moving within us. And we affirm divine love through me blesses and increases all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I have. I give in love because I am love and I love to give. Thank you, God. Amen. And we are so grateful in our beloved community, whether you can literally be in this building, which we remind you we're starting to do in very small groups by reservation. You can register for upcoming services, but we have so many things going on for the tall and the small, as we say. And so I want to highlight a few of those. With our youth and family ministry, we have a Unitine spirit group. They meet on Sundays at 2 o'clock. Our Youth of Unity spirit group meets on Sundays at 1.30. And we are excited that we have kicked off our big life sacred circle for our kindergartners through fifth grade. And they gather together on Tuesdays from 7 to 8. This stuff looks so good. I'm, th I'm thinking I just want to see if I can get back into fifth grade for an hour on Tuesdays. Lots of wonderful things going on in our youth and family ministry. We invite you to tune in. We are celebrating our youth and family ministry and all of us this Sunday at 11 via live stream. It's our Crossing the Bridge of Faith Sunday. I love to gather with congregants in our spiritual cafe Tuesdays, bring a beverage and zoom on in and we talk about life, the universe and how we are standing in truth. Our spiritual action group meets this Tuesday evening at seven and our silent unity prayer service is Wednesday at seven as well. All of these available on Zoom and for our sacred services on live stream. We know that our prayer, that our meditation, whatever we are doing to connect with that daily practice and the beloved community allows us to move daily, sometimes hourly, from fear to faith. And we are so grateful for you and for all the ways that we can know these truths together. And so as we prepare to continue this journey of faith, let us just take a moment wherever we are and remember that power and presence of God that is the truth of us within us. If it is comfortable where you are to put your hands near your heart and to feel that heartbeat that is the essence of life. To know that wherever we are, no matter what is occurring, that that heartbeat is the divine beating of life. We hold in our hearts the faith that passes all understanding. We move forward grateful and blessed. We are free from fear. We are uplifted in spirit. We are healthy. We are whole. We are filled with that light and love of God. We know this. We claim this. We affirm this. And each one, beloved of God, we go forth to live this now. Amen. Namaste.